Hey guys, I've been a lot of requests to uh, go over how I wired up my boat. So today I'm going to give you a quick overview and uh, get you on your way. We're in the rainy season in uh, Houston right now, so I've thought in the driveway doing a little maintenance on the boat. I installed a clam cleat at the base of the mast to make it easier to raise the mainsail from the, uh, the cockpit. And I added a pad eye on the bottom and I looped down on the boat mount so I can put a rope across there to keep the mast from twisting too far because I can't get the factory set up to last a, a whole sail. And while I was there I took some pictures of the wiring system I have on the boat. I've got a lot of requests to explain exactly how I did it all. Now I'm no electrician, but I've wired up a few boats in my day. So I'm going to start with the uh, the head of the list here, the solar panel. So I got a question about the electrics. And uh, I have right under here, I have a 35 crank amp, 12 volt wheelchair battery. And it uh, it's overkill for what I'm doing, the LED lights, the GPS and all, it, it, it is overkill which I, I like overkill. And, uh, but it's just, just a little thing. It doesn't weigh any, it weighs like seven pounds or something. And it's really, it's, it's perfect. And then this, this is a small little $30, got it off Amazon solar panel. And it, uh, it's about three quarters of an amp, which isn't much. But the GPS, they have the big old Garmin GPS, that only runs half an amp, so it runs that I'm going to get my little ship to shore radio plugged in and so says I can get up to about an amp, a little over an amp. And this takes care of at least half of what I got running. All of it, if I don't have the accessories on, I'm just running GPS. And the battery's more enough to handle it. But the main purpose of this isn't so much as while I'm running, is my dock is a good ways from the cabin down there at the golf. And it's a big pain in the ass to run a wire down and plug it in and do the charger. And I go down there like once a week, go sailing. With this, I can sit down, there's a Texas sun on it, and I can tie it up to the dock, walk away. And, you know, I get down to about the 12-volt mark at the best, running all day with all the electronics, the music and everything. But with this, when I come back a week later, it'll be 13, 8 volts, the whole system. And uh, it's nice not to have to, uh, and not have to charge it up. I'd have to run a charger. It's completely self-contained. I get out on an overnight or camping trip, I know that, it's going to be, you know, it's going to hang on to itself. And that's a, that's a nice feeling because I've yet to have to put an actual charger on this charge, on this battery. It's fully self-contained. Take your mind off it, let it run. And that's the solar panel. So now with the panel behind us, let's move down to the battery. As I've mentioned, it's a Duracell Ultra 35 cranking amp hour battery. It's designed for wheelchairs and we'll do anything you want on this boat. I have it set up with quick disconnects, including an extra one for the charger, should I ever need it. And there's plenty of room in the battery box for the solar panel regulator. Now you just have to decide how you want to run the hot and the cold back to the cockpit. One of the tricks I've used over the years is to use an old orange outdoor extension cord. Everyone's got an old frayed one in the back of the garage we don't use anymore. They're insulated, bundled up, easy to work with, and have three good solid wires inside. In this case, I used one for hot, one for ground, and one for a back feed to bring power back to the uh, nav light on the bow. So all the wiring between the nose and the cockpit's all done in that one cord. Now you can run it under the floor. It's a lot of screws to remove. It's a pain in the ass. I did it. Then I rerouted it all a second time. I went up high and put little, little adhesive clips across the, up underneath the uh, gunnel there. And it's out of the way, easy to get to, and it was a lot easier route. Now we move down to the, uh, the main power switch and the fuse block. Now you're only dealing with an amp, amp and a half at best, so you don't need a big ass honking switch. My 34 footer, it's a big old handful of a switch, but it's a whole different animal. This is a, a small little boat. You just need a nice little toggle switch. And uh, it's, it'll do you just fine. You can order a nice little marine block off of Amazon. They're cheap. 
And as you can see, they come with way too high amperage of, uh, of the fuses. So you need to go pick up like some three ampers and replace it all. As you see, I've been too lazy to do it. And thought I had actually till I took this picture. I'll be on Amazon as soon as I post this video ordering some smaller fuses. You really don't need more than three or four fuses, so, you know, don't go crazy. Next, you're going to want a voltmeter. And there's lots of ways. You can get them in little banks with a cigarette lighter, plug-in deals and such, but uh, I wanted a separate unit. Hey, you know, they're cheap. And you run the hot right from the, uh, the fuse box. The power line beats to the fuse box. That's where you put your hot, and then you just ground the other wire. And when you flip on the switch, the power switch, boom, you know exactly where the battery's at. Upstream of any kind of electronics, it'll drag off that meter. You're going to want a couple of 12-volt uh, plug-ins, the old cigarette lighters type. And uh, wire them into a fuse block, give them their own separate fuse. You might want to go with a little higher than 3 amp maybe for that one. But uh, that way, like here, I, I, uh, I plug in my ship to shore keep it going. If you transmit, which I transmit a lot, it eats up those little batteries fast in the ship to shore, so you got to have them plugged in. Then from there, you just break up what you want on which fuses and wire it up. Like the, my GPS has its own, own fuse. Plus it has an inline fuse on its power line, which is like about a one amper. I also have a couple of the uh, 12 volt plugs up towards the uh, front seat there so my passenger can charge their phone and whatnot. And that's where I plug in my XM also. I have that one uh, switched separately. That's a switch under the GPS because the XM power little plug-in, If you're not even if you're not using the XM, it's a battery draw so I have it such that I can shut that one right down. And the other two switches, the one's the uh, masthead light and the other the nav lights, you know, the bow light and the stern lights, which are on separate uh, fuses. So if you pop a fuse on one, at least you got enough uh, light on the other to get you back where you got to be. So it's redundant. And obviously you wire the compass light to the nav lights. I see that ugly little rusty mess there under the GPS. That's a stainless steel screw, but it's not a stainless steel washer, which wasn't a problem in Michigan, but when I got to Texas in the salt water, it, it, it became a problem. But what that is, it's the, uh, the back side of my main ground. I drilled the hole, put the screw in, and bolted it front and back tight to the boat. Sandwiching in the, uh, the main ground wire from the battery, from straight from the battery to here. And then I ran an individual ground for everything, so should I have to take anything off or replace anything, I don't have to cut any wires or anything. The ground is all one separate unit for each little piece of whatever's on there. So I just crimped on the eyelets and I put them on the screw and then I put the, uh, the nylock and a washer on the, uh, the bottom to tighten them all up. And that provides a good solid ground for all the electronics and all the plug-ins and hookups. And uh, if there's ever a problem, I know where to look. There's no doubt in my mind with the, uh, the salt water, I'm going to have to go in and redo much of this in another year or two. And while I'm here, I'll touch on the GPS's uh, transducer. It's designed to be mounted underneath the boat, but I didn't want to do that. So I cut the bottom out of a food storage container and then used plumber's putty and attached it to the bottom of the boat behind the, uh, the cockpit seat. I used a little more putty and uh, attached the transducer right to the bottom of the boat, making sure there was a gap underneath there easily for the uh, fluid, the liquid, to get underneath the transducer, between the hull and the transducer. Then I filled it with mineral oil, put the top on it, the lid on it, and I can throw stuff in the back, it's just fine. And it works great right through the boat, I haven't had any trouble with it. The plumber's putty, it's soft and pliable and I can go back in and redo it should I ever want to or if I get to a different GPS or whatever and move it differently. It's, it's not a permanent setup. Well hopefully that gave you some ideas. I figure if you can rig the boat, sail it, you're smart enough to figure out all the stupid little wiring in the middle stuff and that'll give you an idea. And encourage you to get out there and uh, wire it up and put some toys on that boat. I'll keep the videos coming, the sailing and whatnot. Subscribe to the channel, it won't hurt. And uh, I'll see you again. Bye.